Hi, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Erica. Today I'm gonna to show you how to label your quilt projects. Labeling your quilt projects is so much fun, and I think it's also really important, especially if you are gifting them or they're getting passed down through the generations. I think it's really important to have some of that historic information on your quilt. When I first started quilting, I was not very good at this, and so I actually gifted a ton of quilts to family and friends, and none of them have a label on them. So that makes me really sad, so I do try to be better about that now and label all of my projects. And by the way, this isn't just for quilting. You can use these labels on any of your handmade gifts. Now, before we get started, I know you're gonna ask. I have a cute little pouch here that I keep all of my labels in and I have a whole variety of these labels and I actually joined a club called Sweetwater Tagged and it's a subscription. It's a monthly subscription and each month you get a personalized tag. They're all printed on this same size paper so sometimes they'll come with three labels, sometimes they'll come with like two this size and then sometimes they'll come with one label. So you never know what you're gonna get but they're all personalized with your names and different colors and usually they're sort of seasonally based. So this gives me no excuse not to label my projects. As you can see, I have quite a few of them building up and you don't have to belong to a subscription club like I do. I like these because they're personalized and I just don't have to think about them, they keep coming and then I can have a stack of different kinds to choose from when I'm labeling my projects. But another great resource for handmade labels is Etsy. Often you can get those personalized as well or sometimes they'll just sell cute little packs of handmade, made with love, labels and tags like that. These ones are fusible, which means on the backing, there's kind of a shiny coating on there, which means you can iron these on to the back of your project and then just stitch around them, which is really handy. I also have this little basket of all of these sew-in labels. And so these ones are kind of more like little tags. They fold in half and then you can just stitch them right in to your binding. And I'll show you how to do both labels in today's video. All right, let's go ahead and get started with our tutorial. So in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to do two different types of labels, although like I said, there are more. The first one is going to be this flat label. This was printed um, from Sweetwater Fabric Co. They do monthly subscriptions, and so these are personalized with my name. And then we're gonna be also doing these. These are the little kind of folded ones that you might find in like your clothing. This one is from Fat Quarter Shop, and um, you can also find these on Etsy, of course, as well. So these particular labels are gonna actually be going into our binding, and I'm gonna show you how to, um, this is a pre-finished quilt that I had and I had not labeled it, so I'm gonna show you how I do that since I tend to forget to label my quilts. So, um, so we're gonna be doing this one in the binding and then we'll be doing this one just somewhere down here in the corner. You're also gonna need just a couple basic supplies. So I've got this stiletto. This is from Modern American Vintage, and this can be really helpful when you're just pushing your um, label through the machine. You can use it to tuck under the edges so you don't have any raw edges sticking out, and I think this is super helpful, so I just wanted to show that to you. You're also gonna need your rotary trimmer, a ruler, and then a self-healing mat. Aside from that, you'll need some coordinating fabric that you think might look nice with your label and match your quilt backing as well. This is just a mini quilt that I did. This was actually our May truck of the month and I never um, put a label on it. So we're gonna put a label on it today and we'll use that as our sample. And so I just try and find some coordinating fabrics that I think will look nice. So here's the back of my quilt and I've got this aqua green and then I did this navy binding. Now if I haven't put my binding on my project yet, which might be the case if I were going to be using one of these, I will go ahead and lay it out just so that I can see what everything's gonna look like when I put it together and just make sure everything's gonna match okay. Since I already have my binding on, I don't have to worry about that. Now I can just play with my fabrics. And so I grabbed a white fabric. This is actually a white on white. It's like polka dots. It's really cute and it does kind of go with this line. And sometimes, if I have a white label like this, I will also back it in whiting, white just because sometimes if you put labels like this on a print, you can actually see that print through the label. So just something to keep in consideration. Um, sometimes I don't care, it doesn't bother me. So it just depends um, on each individual quilt. And then I thought one of these might be cute too. So really quickly, I'm gonna set my fabric aside. And like I said, I think I've decided to use this label. So I'm just going to grab my ruler and just as a rule of thumb for me, you can do however you want, but I like to just leave about a quarter of an inch around the outside of my label. And since I have two 
close together. I also just make sure that that's going to work for this other label so that I don't cut too much into this label. So what I'm going to do is line my quarter of an inch line up right here along the edge of my label. You can see my label right there. And I will just make that as straight as possible. Like I said, it looks like I have about a quarter of an inch on these other ones. So I think it's okay to go ahead and cut it like this. And probably what I'll do since I have two here is put my quarter of an inch line on both of those and just get this one out of the way so I don't accidentally cut into that one. Now I can reline it up with my bottom one and I might even scoot it in just a smidge so I don't ruin this top label. All right, and then this one can be out of the way. And then now I can just turn this around and trim up the other two sides. So it's gonna kinda end up looking like this. And like I said, you could even do less. You could even hand cut it so that it's rounded corners if you want. Um, I don't like to do that because I don't like to have to sew around curved edges. All right, now that we have our label out and ready to go, now we can kinda have fun playing with our fabrics. And so I'll actually just lay this out. I'll grab my quilt and I'll just see what looks good. So let's do it this way. So if I do a white and then possibly this green, that's one look and I actually really like that one. Um, if I don't do the white, I could potentially do blue and green, which is actually really cute. And you can kind of see if you feel like you can see the fabric underneath there at all. If it's bothering you, you can do the white. You can do as many layers as you want. I kind of like to do two because I feel like it um, frames the quilt nicely. And so I'll just sit here and kind of play with my fabrics until I find something that I think looks good. We could even do white and blue. I actually kind of like that one. Hmm. That's also really cute. I wish you guys could vote live. I wish this was live so I could get your opinion on which one I should do. So this is what I do when I'm home. Katie! Okay, for my label, do you like this? Mm -hmm. Or this? Green. Like the green better? Mm -hmm. So I think we've decided on this one. So the first thing that I do is I'm just going to take my first piece of fabric, and I haven't even ironed it, and I'm going to just rough cut this because I wanna have some room to work. So now I've got something that's, you know, gonna fit for sure. Let's move our quilt out of the way, and then we're going to just press this, and I like to just kind of press it right in the middle so that I have room to work. If you have a pattern or like gingham, I mean, practice, you know, have fun like moving it around and seeing which way you think is gonna look the best. I'm actually gonna just kind of go like that. And then I do like to not press directly on top of these labels. I'm pretty sure you can, but just to be safe, I usually will lay another piece on top of it and then just go ahead and press. And you're gonna to wanna to just follow the instructions for your label. This one just says to just about 10 or 20 seconds, heat press it on there, and you'll know when it's on because it doesn't come up anymore. Okay, now we're gonna take this to our machine and we're just gonna stitch around this outside edge because even though this is iron on, I also want it to just be more secure. And I'm not sure when you wash it how long that iron on will last. So I always do a stitch right around the edge. All right, I've just run a stitch right around that, super easy. I did back stitch at my bottom down here when, at my stop and start. And then when I get to my corners, I just leave my needle in the down position, raise my presser foot, twist my work, and then keep on sewing. So super easy, and I apologize my camera wasn't recording, so that's why I'm explaining what I've done. All right, now we're going to trim this. And for this one, I usually do, it kind of depends on how much of your label you want showing, right? So. If you are folding it over and you like about the quarter of an inch look, like I tend to do about a quarter of an inch showing on both, um, both layers of my label, which means you're gonna wanna cut a half inch around the outside. Um, you can do it larger. I mean, this is completely up to you. There are no rules here. So if you like a little bit of a larger uh, you know, border, I mean, it's totally up to you. You can just have fun with this. I think for this one, I am going to do about a half an inch from the edge. So here's my half inch marker on my ruler, which makes it kind of easy. So I can just line that up with the edge of my label. And again, just trim. And again, I'm lining up my half inch on this, these two sides. 
Okay, and so we have that piece done. And then now we just need to get our other piece. And I kind of do it the same way. I'm just going to find a spot on this. This is a scrap of fabric. This looks like it'll fit on there just fine. Just make sure you have enough around the outside edge to do whatever it is that you want, you know, however large you want your label to be. So I'm just going to guesstimate. So now since I cut this at a half an inch, I am going to just press this under a quarter of an inch and you can measure this or you can eyeball it. I'm kind of an eyeballer, so <laughs> you know, you do whichever you prefer. This might not be perfect, um, but it's uh, good enough for me. And I'll usually also just look at it from the front, just make sure it basically looks okay. Another thing that's helpful at times like these is a tailor's clapper. You can just set that on there until your piece cools and then you have nice crisp edges and then we can do the other sides. So once we have those two sides done, now we can do these two sides and then you can just grab these and just fold those over. And we're gonna use our stiletto just to make sure that you can't see those little raw corners popping out. And if you're curious, while this is cooling, this is just a DIY ironing board that I made. I do have a tutorial on how to make these. I made a much larger one for my sewing room, which I'm sure you have all seen. Uh, this is just a smaller one that I had a piece of wood uh, that I got for free from a garage sale actually. <laughs> and I think they thought I was crazy for taking it, but it was the perfect size for just a little mini ironing station that I can use for my videos. So here we go. It's just nice and pressed. And now, and now we're going to do the same thing that we did when we sewed our label to our first fabric and I'm going to sew the label to our second fabric and I'm just roughly centering it in there. I find it easier to work with a larger piece and then trim it down rather than cut them the exact size and try and center everything. So I'm just gonna run my stitch line around here with about an eighth of an inch. And then when I get right here, I can use my stiletto to kind of just, I don't know if you can see, I have a little bit of that fold pressing out. So I'll use my stiletto just to push this corner in just a tad. You can also use a seam ripper. When I get to my edge, I'm just gonna leave my needle in the down position, raise my presser foot, turn my work, and then I can just keep going. Alrighty, here is our second layer already put on and we just did a quick stitch around that, so very easy. And then now we really just have to do the same thing. We're just gonna be trimming around the outside edge and this one I might make a little bit wider. So maybe we'll do one inch around the outside edge. Ooh, I can barely do that. I probably should have planned that a little bit better. I do have an inch down here, so we're okay there. All right, and then now we just need to press in these edges again, and I'll probably be pressing these in just about a quarter of an inch. And by the way, if you don't wanna get out your iron for this one, another little handy tool, tool is this seam roller. And you can just roll your seams. It's not always perfect. I think the iron is a little bit more accurate and gets your seams a little bit better. But if you're working with something in small like this and you don't feel like heating up your iron, I mean, as you can see, Kind of does a decent job. All right, so I'm gonna grab my iron because like I said, I think it does a little bit better job, but I use that all the time, especially if I just need to press back, like if I'm snowballing corners and I just need to press back a side before I add another one or something. I use that all the time and then I'll press it when I'm done. Okay, here is our finished label and we're pretty much ready to um, put it onto our quilt at this point. So now we're going to put this, I usually put mine in a lower corner. Sometimes I'll put them right in the middle of my quilt, it kind of depends. And then for this part, I will use some pins just to keep it straight. And you can, of course, get out your ruler 
I usually eyeball this as well. Um, I'm not like a super precise quilter, so if you figured that out by now. Um, so this side is about one and three quarters of an inch. This, oh, see? But it usually kind of works out. This is about one and three quarters of an inch as well. So, okay. So then I'm gonna go ahead and stick a few pins in here. And especially if you're doing this on a larger quilt, um, I like to do that because it helps keep it from moving around on you when you're finagling a big quilt. So I will usually just pin it in place then once that's in place, then we can just take this to our sewing machine and then I do stitch right around here. Now you could hand stitch um, and I have a hand stitching tutorial when I add my binding. I have a machine and um, a hand stitch binding tutorial. You can check that out. I'm usually in a hurry at this point, so I go ahead and just sew it on using my machine, which is what I'm gonna do today. But you will have to keep in mind that you, you will see those stitches show through on the front side of your quilt. So if that's gonna bother you, I would recommend hand stitching it on. It doesn't bother me, so I always just machine stitch mine. Um, plus, I think they're a little bit more secure, uh, but you could do it however you prefer. And this is what I'm dealing with right now. Jax is in here and he's all over my room. He's been getting onto my cutting board, my pressing board, and now he's in my chair. You can even use your pin end to tuck in those corners. All right, so here you can see that on the front, just a little bit, but hardly any at all. And especially if this is a quilt you're using and it gets washed and crinkled, you'll hardly even notice that label. But here it is right here on the back. And I think it just turned out really, really cute. Now we're gonna go ahead and add one of the labels into our binding. And instead of double labeling this quilt, I think I'm gonna grab another one of my minis because I wasn't very good at labeling these. I think we're gonna go with September. I didn't label my September one. So here's my September truck of the month, and I didn't label this one either. So I think we're gonna go ahead and put that little heart label right here in our binding. Now normally I would put this label in when I'm adding my binding on the back side, but obviously since I forgot to do that, um, I can go ahead and just add it now even after the fact. So I'm just gonna go ahead and figure out where I want it. I think I'll put it somewhere right in here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pick out that stitch and then I'll carefully pick out the next stitch. And you actually don't need that much. And then once you get a couple out, you can stick your ball in, not your point, and then just kind of carefully rip out some of that binding. And it's gonna just rip it out on the front too, but that's okay. We can just trim that. And now, is that enough? Uh, I might rip out just a little bit more. There we go, that's definitely enough. Okay, so now we have our space in our binding and we can just take our little tag and you can decide if you want the handmade or the hearts facing up. I think I'm gonna go, I think I'm gonna go with the handmade and you just tuck this right into your binding and I will line my label up right along the edge of my quilt unless I'm gonna be covering up the words and then I'll just scoot it out just enough that I can still see all of the words. And then now I'm going to backstitch when I start And then I can go ahead and just sew right over this. Backstitch again at your stops and your start. Trim off any threads, make sure the front looks good, and we're good. All right, and here, is our second label. Look how cute that was and it was so fast. Now I love adding labels into my binding like this because you can't even see that. So, I mean, I just pulled that binding out and re-added it and you can't even tell that I did it. So, I mean, and then this little tag is cute and secure in there. So two super easy ways to label your quilts or handmade projects. All right, that is it. As you can see, it's very easy to label your quilts. I think it's really important as well. And just like I mentioned before, some great resources are Etsy, but you can always search online for personalized quilt labels and find something really fun. You can even print your own if you're a designer. They have printable fabric sheets that you can stick in your printer, um, depending on what kind of printer you have. So check that out. I can label the ones that I used for my Winter Wonderland Advent um, calendar numbers below. It worked great and it was so much fun to design my own. And then of course you can 
always just write on fabric with fabric safe pins or even Sharpies. That's probably my least favorite method because I feel like the ink does fade over time. And if you linger in one spot too long, the ink can kind of bleed out and cause, you know, like um, ink splotches. But one thing I will say about that is that it is kind of nice to have that personalized handwriting, especially if you're handing these um, quilts down to future generations. So do whatever works best for you, whatever you prefer. Those are some of my favorite ways to label my quilts. Let me know in the comments below what your favorite way is to label your handmade quilts and other projects. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to thumbs up and subscribe. You can also hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any upcoming fun. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today and I will see you next Next time. Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Erica and today we're going to be late. <laughs> You can a lot of times get those personalized or some people just have cute little packs of handmade. Jaxie, you're moving my camera. Whew, okay, here we go. She has spoken. Are you filming? Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, that's already. <laughs> nice tags. Sometimes you get a couple. Whoops. <laughs>